What is up, Mets fans? Welcome back to a special episode of the Mets Up Podcast. We had an awesome interview with Felix White and Izzy Wong over from uh, from England. James, tell us a little more. Yeah, a little different than most of the other interviews that we've done. This was more of just a conversation between the four of us. Felix is a cricket podcaster, and he announces MLB games over in England. Also in a band. Also in a band, current and former musician. That's kind of how we started liking the Mets. You guys will hear that story. And Izzy is a very talented young cricketer. She's a bowler, which is cricket's equivalent of pitching and she has one of the hardest bowls throws in the entire world for a woman. I think pushing about 80 miles an hour, which is pretty incredible. She talks about her process there and it was a great talk. Just learned about, talk about the Mets, talk about the Mets going to London next year. London series against the Phillies next June. What are the dates, Mark? Uh, June 8th and 9th. June 8th and 9th in London great conversation and we hope you guys enjoy it yeah so guys uh if you have not yet followed us on our social media make sure you are at metz up on twitter instagram and tiktok if you want to see the video version of the podcast that we do go subscribe to the new york mets youtube channel and if you want to listen to us after every series and once a week during the off season maybe if there's some big news a little bit more often apple Podcasts, spotify google odyssey drop us a rating drop us a review and most importantly download and subscribe thank you guys for listening thanks for watching and let's get going to that interview i don't know if you've just seen it but izzy's just thrown the first pitch I Felix caught the first pitch. Oh, yeah. really? That was yeah. you? I saw you in the catcher's gear. Did you? Yeah. She stung it. Strike. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was a good First throw. pitch. Everyone, well, after we were walking through the concourses, everyone's going, hey, good pitch. <laughs> yeah, it was a good so, pitch. <laughs> yeah. Take that, I, take that. I'll I did not that. expect to catch it as well. It was actually like a small insight into how it feels to doing that well. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? It must have catch it every time like that. It's just like, it's a really sweet feeling for the soul. Just be like, oh. <laughs> The sound the was nice as well. Yeah, but yeah. it's not yeah. about me, it's about Izzy. He's... No, of course. Yeah, of course. And, and that was just... a great first pitch. And you Thank took you. your precautions wearing the mask, of course. Well, do you know what it was? We were do- we'd been shooting today, and um, we met at Adam Ottavino. And the interesting thing we wanted to do is that Izzy is an amazing cricket bowler who bowls lots of variations and bowls really fast. And mm. so we thought it'd be interesting if she met Adam and them not knowing anything really about each other's skills, like sort of transferred it of each other. Yeah. And she, Adam taught her a fastball and the first ball she threw was like heat so quick <laughs> and I was well, I didn't have any gear on and I just caught it and I think no nope, when she actually does that I'm gonna have as much protective gear as possible <laughs> and that's um that's why I was in all that gear did they get you a miles per hour reading on it at all? no or? I haven't I haven't seen one I don't, I'm, I'm not sure it was I'm not sure it was too high but I was I was pleased with the direction the direction was what I was worried about okay. I think it was yeah. is he's famous in England for bowling fast yes we, we saw yeah so that like, she rushes people for pace <laughs> so it's not surprising she did that yeah is he what were the main differences between throwing a baseball and throwing a cricket ball good question great question first difference was like actually like a cricket the floor is usually relatively flat oh. like some grounds are on a hill so it's like not that flat but obviously the mound is like really quite steep um, and then the other main difference is that when you bowl in cricket your arm has to be straight mm-hmm. yeah. so we use like a run up to generate you know that, pace you know that. I, I like it yeah. little we, we had like a friend that like played cricket like in like elementary school like in like recess but we I don't think we played the right rules <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and we watched yeah. some of Vissy's videos before, yeah. before we started this yeah so basically in cricket you run in and then you've got to keep your arms straight whereas yeah. obviously in baseball you, you start still and use your leg to kind of generate that speed and there's no there's no hill there's well some grounds have hills yeah, some, so it's not, it's but, some it's not uniform. Well, like, accidental hills. If there's a oh. hill in the area and they put a ground there, then the ground is hilly. But there's not a mound. But so, there's not a mound. So oh, to speak. That's so interesting because in baseball, the pitch where the pitchers pitch on the mound is so manicured. It's like one of the most important things about the field they play on. Like every single day, they're matting it down, they're raking it over, and the pitchers, you'll see them like some of them like a deeper thing in front of in front of the mound, some of them like a shallower one. When they're pitching and they step, some of them will change where that hole is. That's it's interesting how different it is. Yeah, I yeah. love the word manicured for that. Manicured. Because yeah. <laughs> it, it kind of is that, isn't yeah. it? It's 100%. like a process. And mm-hmm. like doing they're it. very particular, every single thing. Man- making your home yeah and uh, John honestly it's so fascinating how similar the skills are because Izzy was going through the grips of Adam and it's like a change up yeah is what a fast bowler and cricket would bowl as a slower ball so it's yeah. exactly the same outcome with the same thing where your fingers might go wider or the other side of the seam mm-hmm. or that kind of thing and it's almost the same thing happens but in cricket the ball's bouncing once so yeah it's kind of the same like I'd say it's the same process but like we're looking for a different outcome obviously because we use the pitch okay. so like when I bowl I'm looking for the ball to hit the floor mm-hmm. so and obviously when pitchers pitch they're so they're focusing on what it does in the air 
whereas yeah. I'm looking for the output of the ball hitting the floor. So oh. the ball, when you know, when they bowl a cutter, they're trying to get the ball to, to go that way. Yeah. Whereas when I bowl a cutter, the ball's still going that way, but it's the bit when it hits the floor and then it's going to grip. That's the bit that we're looking for, the grip. Interesting. Yeah. So, like, Adam Adovino has a great slider. Did he show you, like, how to throw that? Is that something that you would be able to use in cricket? Yeah, so the slider was kind of... What I got from the slider was it was similar to, like, trying to swing the ball. Yeah. So the fast ball... Because he goes right to left, doesn't he? Yeah. He yeah. dives it, like, fades it. Yeah. So in cricket, yeah. our ball has, like... It just has one seam. It just goes all the way around. And yeah. if you hold it, if you can bowl it and keep the seams standing up, then you've got two sides of the ball basically coming down like this. Yeah. So we like, we keep the ball for the whole game. So That's it crazy. scuffs Whoa. up. And oh. basically our job as players is to like look after the ball. Yeah. So we'll like rub on our trousers. Like you can get a bit of sweat from your neck <laughs> yeah. and stuff and rub it on. Keep and you're allowed to clean. do that. There's some things that you're not allowed to do. Yeah. So you've got to kind of play with that. But you basically want one side to be really shiny and that's called the shiny side. Right? So you get the shiny side and after about, you know, a couple of overs, the ball's hit the floor a bit. It's been, you know, you've been whacked into the car park. They've got it back. You've rubbed it on your trousers, sorted the one side out. You get this really shiny side and the rough side. Because the aerodynamics on the shiny side, it moves through the air faster. Mm. So it comes through the air and okay. it goes like that. And, it, and then eventually it gets battered and it stops swinging. That's where we go to the change up. That's where we bowl the cutters. Gotcha. Everything else. That feels like such a funny difference in American and English cultures as well because for us the ball gets a little scuffed throw it away get a new one you guys <laughs> yeah. like the players are looking after the ball all game up. everyone <laughs> clean it fix it make sure it's okay Love like it. you guys do well and we do well I heard so you say true. when it goes into the car park you get it back yeah yeah you have to get that's it back that's crazy and then they add yeah. yeah we have a time limit for like the whole game wow so like if you get hit into the car park some, t- some umpires are like yeah we'll add three minutes for ball collection and then yeah. sometimes they're really harsh and you've got to go up to the umpire and be like come on mate I've just been hitting to the car park it's <laughs> taken them 20 metres to go and get it like come on you can add a minute or two there or sometimes it will literally go into someone's pint and the person will have to fish the ball out throw it back on oh my god and then the players will still play yeah. with the ball yeah, it's yeah. fascinating it's so different it is <laughs> yeah. we also we saw that you play in a lot of different leagues like different countries England, India, Australia are there differences in rules in gameplay like in fandom in those different leagues yes yeah, so in international cricket it's one set of rules all around the world so you know if you're playing for England against India in India the rules are the same as they are in England if you're playing against India but for the franchises um, there are there are some different rules so um, like the Big Bash League last year brought in like a substitution rule Mm. so you could like substitute a player at some stage Mm. designated Um, hitter yeah effectively yeah yeah, a designated hitter Um, and then so the hundreds is like our massive competition um, at home in the UK and they've like kind of completely rewritten the rules but like not it's like they've kept it as cricket but like so we we have these things called an over right so yeah. s- six balls I'm even doubting myself because no, no, I've been not, playing the I'm hundred it, yeah. so six, six <laughs> it's balls. hard to keep all straight all different yeah, leagues six balls in cricket is an over so okay. if, if I'm bowling I'll bowl six balls and that's an over okay and then Felix so that'll be from one end and then Felix We'll bowl six, six balls, balls from the other end, uh, and that's called an over. So we do gotcha. when we play twenty twenty. That's twenty overs and twenty overs. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. That's like kind of it's far in yeah. yeah. time. But in the hundred, yeah. they change it so it's five ball overs, and then you do two from each end. Oh, so to try and make yeah. the game go shortening quicker. it. Yeah, to shorten oh, okay. it. Basically, in short, I think you'll understand this. Cricket is in a perpetual state of how do we not die yeah. and stay modern. So like this yeah. game that takes a long time and like has the essence of life in it and takes forever they're always trying to like match it up against people with short attention spans yeah so we're trying to make it short 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 in order to like keep some of it but also make it adaptable in the real world and that feels very much like what baseball is doing with is that the, the pitch, pitch clock, clock. yeah mm-hmm. it's the similar sort of mentalities we're trying to like mm. mold it into yeah. the world so that we don't get left behind if that makes sense oh yeah 100 i mean baseball is going through the same thing and like you said you saw a pitch clock today that's something that's yeah. completely new this year mm. from your guys perspective Perspective, like coming from England, watching cricket, what does like the pace of play does it feel slow? I know like some people sometimes think baseball is a little boring. Oh, baseball! No, do you know I what? think baseball's fast compared to oh, cricket. Oh, really fast. Yeah, yeah. Like as a seamer, like that's what we call people who try and bowl fast. Okay. As a seamer, my run up is 22 meters. Oh. So every time I bowl, I run in 22 meters to the crease, so. bowl it. I then follow through like five, five meters, ten meters from bowling wow, well okay. because I'm like, this is great, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> and then I've got to walk all the way back. Yeah. So I'm averaging like a ball a minute. Wow. If, if, yeah, not, yeah, if not slower. It's wow. slow. Yeah. 
Yeah. And our clock is 15 seconds now. Per well, oh, 50, no, 15? 30? 30, it was, yeah. Wait, 20. was it 30? 20. I thought yeah. it was 20. Oh, 20? Yeah. Wow, it's shorter than I thought it was. Yeah. Joe, the, the interesting thing with the pitch clock, I think, from outside perspective is um, when some, if you're watching the games and you're locked in, if you're watching the game, I think it works really well because it's like got a rhythm and yes. a metric. But if you go to baseball to sort of drift and yeah. drink and hang out, which I think a lot of people do, and kind of like it's a life experience where you're not necessarily yeah. watching the game, I think then sometimes it moves disturbingly quickly and you don't mm. get your time to be sort of in the ballpark and in the experience. That's what my feeling is. But I like watching the game, so when you when it's it's satisfying when it's at that yeah, pace if you definitely. know what I mean that's what I would say about it it has felt like that too because like the way that baseball was like the average time per pitch was between 30 and 40 seconds so you could come to the ballpark saunter you can go get your snacks go to the restroom and not miss very much get your beer yeah but when you're watching on TV it would have a it would drag sometimes because the guy takes the mound the ball he walks around the mound he comes back he steps it's off easy. Yeah, and it's it takes like a while it's like easy wandering back that's yeah, if lot. you're bowling really well you walk back really slow <laughs> <laughs> When you're bowling yeah, badly, you're like almost running back. Oh, yeah, you're like, get me out of here. Yeah. <laughs> and that's kind of funny too because then you're setting the pace. Like you're bowling well, you're in control of the game. And a lot of people thought with baseball that the pitchers would be the ones very most affected by this. But it turns out that the hitters are now the ones that are realizing the tempo's quick. It's kind of hard to keep track of that. Like, what, is there any way that you kind of take the game over, like you said, like when you're on the, on the mound bowling? Oh, absolutely. So when we're, so if we're going really like if the team is doing really well and we're like restricting their runs we'll try and get through as quick as possible so you know we'll be because obviously our our fielders have to move every over so we'll be like sprinting around in the field trying to almost rush the batters so if we can bowl our overs really quick then suddenly we'll have bowled 10 overs and they've got no runs and then they've you know they've not got long left and then at the end of the game we'll try and really take a step back because at the end of the game basically is when the batters in cricket are just trying to hit the ball as far as they can so as bowlers that's where there's just no margin for error Mm -hmm. so that's where we're trying to slow the game down really you know talk to talk to your captain talk to you right what do you think i should bowl you think Mm. i should bowl this i think this okay let's do this let's set the field right is everything there really focusing and really kind of taking your time and And you're giving them more time to think about it as well but i think that kind of build to the drama in cricket yeah, 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 exactly. because that's the bit where it's like every ball's kind of there's something on it and yeah. you kind of get that that's so true and that's so that's something that cricket and baseball both have is the thing of like time contracting and then yeah, expanding definitely. you know what I mean it kind of moves it's the best part, like that. It's the best part of it yeah. and you can feel when everyone's attention's on it time sort of you feels like time goes really slowly yeah. like in the key oh, moments yeah. and then sometimes it just moves without you knowing it yeah. both games are really special for that it's like when you're underneath a high ball that's when the time is going <gasps> slowest yeah, exactly. when that ball is in the air yeah. like, yeah. I don't know what it's like when you've got a glove on but I'm... you haven't got a glove on that ball's in the air and you're like oh my god it's been there for yeah. 10 it's minutes been <laughs> I also, when's it coming down <laughs> I love hearing just like the differences in like yeah. when you guys high ball, ball like you call it a high ball it's like a fly ball or yeah. a pop up for us yeah, yeah. or like you like saying like you know over as opposed to what yeah. we call like an inning yeah. so interesting to hear like like the differences and just like the words to essentially describe the same, the same thing. thing. Yeah, 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 but the language is that's the best thing as well because it's this indecipherable fantasy language that you don't hear anybody else yeah. anywhere else. But it's like really poetic, yeah. and you know it feels like another world when you're entering it. And cricket definitely has that. Then I mean, googlies and what, I don't know what. Yeah. I mean, what <laughs> was that mean? Ducks, googlies, exactly and ducks. Exactly, giggled at yeah. googly. That's yeah. exactly the, what, what it's like <laughs> in cricket. It's just words that just feel like they've come out of some sort of like. Like we have a fielding position called cow corner. Cow corner. Yeah. Cow, cow corner. corner. Mm-hmm. We have a hot what, why is it called cow corner? I've got no idea why it's called cow corner. I think it's because when it was invented, the cows used to graze there is it? hundreds of years <laughs> ago. There you go, yeah. I'll t- sounds good to me. It gets shortened to cow. And, and I, like, go to cow, and they'll be like, yeah, cool. And, and that goes cow. along with just some, some grounds just have hills. And now they just have yeah. a hill, you have to play with the hill. Some have trees. Some right. grounds have trees. Trees? If you hit the tree, six. What? It's a six? It's yeah, like yeah. A, so it'd be like having a tree in the middle of, in the, middle of the park. I'm and then insane. if you hit, if you hit <laughs> the tree, home run. Even if the tree's like 20 yards. No matter what, it's home run. Yeah. Americans would have no patience for this. Yeah. <laughs> no, Everything no. needs to be uniform, together, ready, <laughs> set, go. The, the same ball's rules. got scuff, we're having a new yeah. one. <laughs> we, we had one stadium in baseball in Houston years ago that did have a hill. 
And it was this weird thing that just like, for some reason, when you went to this park and you went all the way to the center field, you had to go up a hill the last second, right before the fence. And I believe someone, there were a couple of beautiful catches made on there. One player in the Mets, What's Carlos Astro, Beltra. Astro, Astros, Astros, Astros yeah. yeah. He made the catch going back onto the hill. Another player, Jim Edmonds uh, from the Cardinals, who were in London a few years ago, did the same. Right. And I believe someone might have got hurt on there yeah. or something. Well, the hill yeah. gets steep at the last minute. It would just go up. It would just be like flat, 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 hill, fence, over. Right. Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah, well, we, that's use, we will use the hills and like the dimension so like if there's a big uphill one side we'll be like right we need to try and get them to hit up the hill because obviously it's hard <laughs> to hit up the hill but then if you're like bowling and like they're hitting down the hill you're thinking right i need to not let them hit me down the hill i need to make them hit me like sideways almost oh my god so, so i mean like there's obviously a lot of similarities between so, cricket and baseball how did you guys even get exposed to baseball in the first place like how do you even find it in the uk well that's a good question i mean i can answer i was gonna say the, uh, i went to it through felix my, <laughs> my um <laughs> My first exposure to baseball was in, in my past life. I was in a, in a band that toured all the time. And in like 2015, Good we year. were on tour and we were doing well everywhere else, but we came to America and it had dropped off for us in America. So I was like, for some reason I decided I was going to not drink on this tour as well. So I needed something to do while like our popularity was declining a little bit in America. <laughs> and I just realized when I was going to every single state and city, like baseball is always on. And oh, yeah. it's like this sort of fluorescent glow in cabs and in bars and in restaurants and hotel rooms, you flick it over. So, so I just thought it just just had this sort of glow to it and I ended up putting more time into it just firstly because it aesthetically just looked beautiful to oh, me mm -hmm. uh, like the greens against the browns and the balletic nature of it and then when I, I've always been in love with cricket and when I got closer into it I realised like oh this is so similar to cricket the disciplines the judgement the games within a game the poetic nature of the language you say all that yep. kind of stuff but as that tour un well, went through the Mets were on a roll and yes. they got to the World Series that year and the first thing that struck me was they all had these cartoonish players. <laughs> Granderson, Cespedes, yep. um, David Wright, Bartolo Colon, yep. uh, Danny Murphy who's here today. Yeah, he's here today. Yeah. Yeah. All those kind of players. You had a little fanboy moment down. Yeah, it was, down it was amazing being ending. close to him. Yeah. Yeah. Over Murphy? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he had that amazing well, he had six times in, in a row yeah. in that run. So I was sort of really, um, I was drawn to them because they looked like cartoon characters, but also <laughs> like a, a very flawed people as well, like mm. maniacs and flawed. And so I got really into the Mets because I felt like, oh, there's this sort of melancholic thing with Mets where it's definitely doomed, but they're like, they've got a flair to them. Yep. And so there's just all this stuff inside this team and then eventually I flew home when they lost the World Series and Matt Harvey that night been in yeah. but I tried to go the whole yeah. thing and I yeah. watched that from London as if the whole thing had been a distant dream yeah. and then from that moment on I just thought I'm going to stay in touch with baseball because it's got magic to it and then my life became more about cricket because I love cricket and then by some strange coincidences um, they've asked me to come and cover baseball and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm dragging along cricketers <laughs> and saying, like, I think you'll like this. Yeah. And it it's pretty cool out, drag along. Yeah, exactly. It's not bad. I, yeah, right? I, it's pretty... New York City, yeah. baseball, not and, bad. Thanks and for the Izzy invite. loves it. And there's a lot of other cricketers back home as well. They're like, wow, this is really... But actually, what I've just said just leads me to something I want to ask you guys. Sure. Have I got that right? Is, is an essence of... What would you say? Is there some a theme that runs across being a Mets fan? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, uh, how much time do you have? Yeah, <laughs> especially, like, that team itself was such a hodgepodge. It was almost like the Island of Misfit Toys, that lineup you described, because it was guys who came from different backgrounds. A lot of them did look like basically cast-off cartoon characters, but then yeah. they had this rotation of pitchers that, like, come from the ground, all developed yeah, by the Mets. Syndergaard was in that? Uh, Syndergaard, yep, Harvey, DeGrom. Yeah. Those three were, like, along with Zach Wheeler, who didn't pitch in that World Series, but those were, like, supposed to be, like, the next generation of Mets greats. And pitching, like, bowling, like, you control of the game you're on the mound and like that game like Harvey like if you're on like you can win the game almost entirely on your own and I it became receive the information it's just too I can see flashbacks of it yeah, oh, yeah. 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 I, I was there so like being able to experience the World Series going to like the World Series with my dad who is the entire reason I'm a Mets fan yeah like it was really cool to take in that it would have been better if they won but right. like I remember when 
they beat the Royals in that game, and Syndergaard whizzed one right by Alcides Escobar's head for the first pitch of the game. Yeah. And we were like, oh, this is, this is going to be great. Like, yeah. the, everybody immediately, like, started inching up on their seats, leaning in, David Wright hitting a home run, Cespedes home runs. Like, just yeah, man, all right. the huge moments. It didn't end up working out, but, like, I, Matt Harvey coming out for that ninth inning, I, everybody was on their feet screaming and yelling, and it's, like, something that as my first experience being at a World Series game with the Mets. I'll never forget that. It's like, you know, I'm reading a really good um, book at the moment about the Mets called So Many Ways to Lose or something like that. <laughs> um, and <laughs> no, well, it's yeah. so great. And one of the lines that I underlined in it was that Mets isn't about being bad. It's about being good at losing. Yeah. And it's the feeling of anything can happen at any moment, good or bad. Yep at any moment but that makes the Mets endure as a sort of experience. It's yeah. like the antithesis of Julia Child's like 55 or whatever ways to make an egg. But it's like just our nightmare version of that. Even but, the, yeah. the Strokes guy? Julia Casablanca. Yeah, yeah Julia oh, Casablanca. Is, is a Met. He's a rabid Mets fan. Because he's got the over to the Mets. He's the yeah, subs. and that he wrote that song the year after the Mets lost the World Series. They made it to the wild card round, which Mark and I argue about whether or not that counts as the playoffs or not because it's only one game. <laughs> I say it's not. He says it is. We'll agree or disagree right now for to move this along. But that Mets lost that game and to like, horrible fashion. Home run the last inning after Syndergaard pitched an amazing game through all the way. And he was on the 7 train which you're seeing run right there, leaving here and it was oh, jam-packed. Good timing. Good timing. Yeah, yeah, right? How amazing was that? Was that right? <laughs> right? Yeah, everything, everything aware. And yeah. it's a packed train. Everyone's upset. I'm sure he was rather drunk at the time. And he just said he got out his notebook, his notepad, and he wrote the lyrics to Ode to the Mets. On that train, just disheveled and sad Julian on the did. way home. Yeah. Oh my God, you're breaking my heart. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, this, I mean, that's the life of a Mets That's what we are. Like, is that true? That Where that came yeah. from? Yes. Oh my God. Oh, to the Mets. my heart into a million pieces. <laughs> that's it, but that's but what it's that's, like being a Mets fan. fan. But that's interesting because um, from afar it's been like Seinfeld supports the <laughs> yep. Mets. Yes. And so when you, from a distance, you kind of have that element of, okay, so the Yankees is about um, evil. Joining the military, <laughs> yeah. being on a Death Star. <laughs> yeah. Like that. And then the Mets is the opposite of that good and bad mm -hmm. so like all the stuff that can unveil in a completely like negative way and all the beautiful stuff that comes out of not being in that uniformed yeah. structure if that makes that that's a, the way I could there's a great quote it. from John Oliver who is English and he came over and he was a comedian now he has a show in America and he said he came over and he fell in love with baseball immediately and he said I wasn't going to like the Yankees because I'm not evil so I decided to become a Mets fan instead yeah yeah because yeah, I have a moral compass yeah, yeah exactly Exactly. It's like that sort of decision. Yeah. Well, it's like it's it's easy to be a fan of the Yankees. It's easy to be a fan of honestly other teams. But like being a Met fan, like it's, work. it's such a roller coaster. Like you can't just you can't just join on. Like if you joined on 2015, okay, great, had a great run. 16 was fun. The next few years were tough, but that you stick around because whenever it's going to hit, it's going to be so worth it. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be such a great payoff, and that's kind of like what Mets fans embody is like. It's going to be up and down. It's going to be tough. It's going to be like you know a little rough around the edges, but when it when it hits, it's going to be incredible. Which strikes me as um, I'm not sure I can say this on an official Mets podcast, <laughs> but there couldn't be a more Metsy thing to happen than to be heavily invested in. Everyone say, okay, these are the big guns now, and it's really not go that way. <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> <laughs> well, they won a lot last year, and it was a lot of fun. But yeah, this one has been trying. But it's just that's it. Like it's grit, and the big thing with Mets fans too, it's loyalty. Yeah. Like they, we, we come back. Like we want it so bad. We want to win. We want to be here. Happen. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. And when it, and it will happen, when it does happen, like that is going to be the payoff of a lifetime. Like when to be there, hanging out, with Mark, my dad, his dad. Like yeah. and it's going to be just like pure euphoria. Probably gonna cry. Do yeah. You know oh that? yeah, I'll cry. It's interesting what they just said there. Is he's like with, with their parents because I think like cricket's got that generational thing as well where you get it gets handed down in some ways or like when teams oh, yeah. like the Mets who don't often win when they do win it's like a more deeply emotional yeah. thing than you can say because there are people there that didn't see it in 69 or 86 or, yeah. or, or that, all that kind of stuff yeah, do you know totally. what I mean so it's like kind of really rooted into your and we had that when England men won the World Cup didn't we like people that had never yeah. seen it before yeah. mm -hmm. And, it and was that sort of a bursting of emotion, which is about more than just the cricket or the baseball, yeah. if that makes sense. You know, neither of my parents play cricket. Really? Yeah. So I completely stumbled upon it by chance. <laughs> how I went. Did that happen? So my primary school, or like, what did junior elementary, school? Elementary, elementary yeah. school. Yeah. So I was like six, 
five or six and like at the after school you know they do like after school clubs you can just sign up for mm -hmm. and I was already doing the football because my family like mad so what you inherited cricket I've inherited football like Liverpool fans like yeah. Liverpool through and through yeah um, but literally by chance I like took the leaflet home of the cricket and was like oh like this looks quite fun like mum I want to try it and obviously mum was like this is ridiculous okay cool. <laughs> and then yeah fast forward I guess 15 um, years and I'm a doing pretty well yeah, yeah. Bad. sorry to say but did you when you I've never we never spoken about this so I'm just going to ask <laughs> yeah, go for it when We're did interested. you first bowl for the first time did it feel natural to well, you well so you didn't like... you didn't bowl at the start so right. at the start obviously if you're teaching loads of kids it, I guess uh, right at the start when you're teaching baseball if you're like getting people to pitch uh, yeah. people hitting the pitches aren't going to be good enough for the yeah. hitters to hit it so we didn't bowl for like three years but like I could like you, you know that dirty a... slog that right. I've got yeah, yeah, yeah. The dirty, uh, sorry, dirty slog. This is that sounds dirty, that sounds inflammatory. A dirty yeah. slog is like kind of a really technically bad shot. Okay. okay. That that just kind of goes a long way, but it mm. like like in terms of technique, it's awful. Gotcha. Yeah, but like it but it works. Yeah. But yeah, it yeah, works. Like, yeah. I always had one of them, and I could like catch, and I loved yeah. like getting muddy. We used to like <laughs> the competition went, but when we were this time's really bad. <laughs> that was when great. we were like five and six, the comp like it wasn't really about the cricket. We'd turn up on a f Thursday, and we'd because you wear whites in cricket, mm -hmm. you try and get your whites as covered in like <laughs> there'd be puddles, yeah. and we'd be like swimming yeah. through them, and it was like all about that, and I just loved it. And then like a couple of years later, we learned to bowl, and I was like, I was, I was all right. That's still in her because when we yeah. came here yesterday to film, <laughs> yeah. I thought it was going to be monsoon for the whole week. Yeah, it felt like that. And Izzy just went, maybe we can just dive across the outfield. <laughs> we, we, said, we were here on Thursday and a similar thing happened. They had the tarp over the field and they were like, I hope they let us slide across that tarp. The tarp, yeah, yeah. Is, it looks like a water slide. Yeah, Honestly. It seems yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, there's been. That's somebody like, who wants to dive and get as muddy as possible. Yeah. I'm saying ride a cup in Europe versus America, but on the water slide across the tarp. Yeah, <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> There was, there. there was a huge, it's not like a huge moment, but there's like a very memorable Mets moment with like a tarp and sliding across it. Oh, is that? They were playing the Yankees, there was a rain delay, and Robin Ventura, who was the Mets third baseman at the time, came out and imitated Mike Piazza, who was one of the best Mets of all time, catcher, Hall of Famer, imitated like a big home run that he hit, and he ran around and like slid into home with like the tarp and the water and everything. Yeah. It was like, there's no viral clips back in like 2000, but if it was nowadays, that would be like everywhere. So that's right. like kind of funny to bring up, like, you're like, oh, I want to slide across that, and the Mets like have a weird story with that. Can we that's find incredible. It on I want to find yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. I want to find that. Certainly. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Do you know what I watched in, the, in um, lockdown? I decided could just to take myself out of that situation, but I was going to watch the entire 86 World Series wow. all okay. on YouTube. Oh, yeah. So I watched the Mets win that World Series from game one to. I don't know if it's game... It's, did it go to game seven? Game yeah, six is when Buckner, but yeah. so when game seven, I watch every single one of those games in, in a week, every night. Oh, my God. In lockdown. Yeah. If you want to watch, like, old old World Series... This is what you... We, we went to the museum earlier, YouTube. and the ball... That's where the ball's from, right? Yeah. The ball. That yes. is, like, that is like the, the baseball. Like, that's there was the, one baseball the in the world that you could preserve in an apocalypse, it'd be that one. It's the quintessential yeah. piece yeah. of Mets history. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. like, the ball that, like... I, I mean, my dad was a fan before that, but, like, I think if they don't win 86 necessarily, like, who knows what the next generation of Mets fans would look like without that ball yeah. going through Buckner's leg, winning a World Series. Like, it was pandemonium. It was but it's also quite, isn't it, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, but it's quite Metsy that it happened with, because I, I wanted the Mets to win that series and was watching it back in retrospect, but when it happened, my heart broke into a hundred million pieces <laughs> yeah. for that guy. Oh, so, so bad. It's quite, of course. it was quite stitched into a sort of Mets story that that would become yeah. almost as famous as the victory. No, do you know what I mean? And even that player, like he was a fantastic player, but he's now only remembered for that. And he, that's, exactly. that's, that's like your worst nightmare. Like you've got yeah. a ball coming towards yeah. you, and like almost anything, if there's a lot of people watching, almost any, everything that's going through your mind is, yes. don't go through your legs, don't go through your legs, yeah. don't and go through your legs. The funny thing is, he was also old towards the end of his career and they just wanted him on the field for the for the celebration I was getting told so he's someone who was often taking off late <laughs> in the game the for defense they wanted him on for the celebration and oh. then he had to make the play and it, it, he eventually I did not I actually can't hear that <laughs> <laughs> it's hard it's like secondhand embarrassment I mean, happy for us great for us yeah. I was going to say it's almost is... like the last what 30 years it's yeah. almost like retribution in a way right, because exactly like you no, nothing in the world just happens with nothing else happening and like in ter return of it so, so like something great that. happens and that's that's kind we of problem we call that the cricket gods yeah yeah we've like been, oh, we've that's, that's what the cricket yeah. gods the cricket gods mean it or mother cricket yeah mother cricket mother do cricket. you have a phrase like mother cricket baseball gods that's pretty yeah. much yeah. baseball gods yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah or just that's that's baseball
Oh, yeah, it's baseball. Yeah. That's baseball. Yeah, I love that. That's yeah. cricket. How many times have you got out and just, like, you sat cricket. down to change room and someone's gone, oh, yeah. it's cricket. Well, yeah, it's like... <laughs> I want to hear, mate. Well, it's <laughs> not. It was a dirty slog, so it's <laughs> more your fault than cricket god's fault. Of course, uh, next year the Mets are going to be coming to play the Phillies. You got to see them play them here today in New York, but next year they'll be in London for the London series. I got to make it out there this past year. Did you? Yeah, for the Cubs Cardinals. Had an awesome time. Yeah, did you enjoy it? It was so much fun. I what mean, did how you make of the atmosphere? I thought it was really good. Like I've so I've been to like a Chelsea soccer game. And I've been to like that atmosphere is crazy. The baseball obviously is not going to be like a Chelsea Champions League game, but I was like really impressed with how into baseball all the fans were, and it was a lot of English people. It wasn't like Americans like me coming over and visiting. There were a few, but like everybody like going to the store, buying the the jerseys, buying the hats, eating the food. Like I had the the culture. That that I, I thought of for baseball, seeing it in another country was fascinating. Do you know what's really reassuring to hear you say that? Because that's exactly what I felt, that it didn't seem like a um, tourism type event. No. It felt like really knowledgeable baseball crowd. It sort of swayed and moved like a proper baseball game where the crowd are reading it yeah. rather than just being there because it's a thing to be at. Mm. And that was quite interesting, I thought, because, as, again, as you say, it wasn't all Americans no. that live over there as well. So that's like... Because I think in England, we'd be quite hesitant about Premier League football being played yeah. in America and it counting, yeah. wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. But yeah. I guess in America... What, what's the... Like, do, is that kind of a positive? It's almost know? just... It's fun. Like, it's fun to watch the game grow. Like, we love baseball, and, like, it's a lot we talked about at the beginning is that, like, there is some... Like, some people in, the, in America, especially, that think the game is slowing down and not, like, modern enough. But, like, to see it go across the world and gain popularity, it's just kind of beautiful for that. I'm going to go there next year. I've never been to England. I plan to go... And to come. Yeah, for the series, so... We'll both be there. Yeah, so tell me just about what to do, where they get, where they get the best food, where they go out, see, listen to the best music, anything like that culturally in the city. I've heard there's a there's a band like they're called like something TV, like some number of 86 maybe TVs. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. They're, they're pretty good, I've heard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. alright. Um, yeah, you can come and see my band if we are in town. Like, <laughs> yeah. Take you up on that. The, um, what, what's it going to do in London? How long are you going to be there for? As long as, we, as long as we can. When is it? June? Yeah, second week yeah, of June, I June. believe. Well, look, for, firstly, from a baseball perspective, I think the thing that you'll, will be interesting to you is that because most ballparks are cut out of the centre, like uh, uh, across the diamond, it's normally the, the air's cut out of it, mm-hmm. so it doesn't retain sound oh. all the time. But football stadiums, it's especially like a bowl. now, are built London like a bowl. Stadium yeah. is... So it, I don't know if you felt that bit. It kind of mm-hmm. it holds the sound mm-hmm. in a different way. So there's a sort of it. There was an intensity to the games there, even though yeah. it's in the middle of like of the se- normal season. Mm. It kind of felt like there was a different sort of postseason intensity yeah. to it. So I think you'll like that. And in, in, in terms of London tourism, you're gonna have to hit me up near the time. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, well, but I, I met um, I met. Uh, Hayden Wesineski, the oh, oh. Cubs pitcher, <laughs> love him. Yeah, I, like him too. So I did a thing out there with him and Patrick Wisdom, and then they came to London. And when they were there, he came over to me and he gave me a hug and he said, "I got my fish and chips first for you, man." <laughs> so he was like doing it. It was the first time he'd ever been to England. Yeah. He got, so I think for a lot of the players, they're doing the sort of like, "Oh wow, we're in." The land of fish and chips. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. doing it, you know. I'm sure this is true for a lot of these players. Like they have never been across there before, so it's like a huge opportunity for them as well. Exactly, yeah. And they're going to be welcomed with open arms. People love yeah. it. Mm-hmm. And I've got a lot of cricketers into it as well. So if you like the cricketers, yeah. elite cricketers like Izzy, you're going to be there. And yeah. hope, I'm yeah, hoping. I'm going to be there. Hopefully. I think yeah. this is the start of a trade-off where more cricketers get to know baseball in mm-hmm. a deeper mm-hmm. way, and like you know. Who knows where it can all be? Well, I, yeah, I kind of, even like we'd kind of spoken about how similar they are, and I thought, oh, like in terms of like actually what's happening, like they seem pretty similar. But actually, like having been to a game, it is like going to watch a cricket game. Yeah. yeah. Like it, that the, the similarities of just the event, and from a fan's perspective, like from a player's perspective, there are major differences, but actually from a fan's perspective, they're so similar. Yeah. That's what you should do. Come yeah. to the cricket. Come to the cricket. Okay. Come to the cricket. That's the deal. I'm you all should in. Spend a little bit, like, even if it's a day or two extra, just come and see some cricket because it'll be international cricket will be happening. Yeah. And I yeah. think that will be the trade off. Yeah. You watch baseball in England, you watch cricket in England, and come and watch it with us and we'll talk you through totally. it. Do you know what I mean? You got yourself a deal. We'll We're go to in. the London oh. series, we'll go to a cricket game. Beautiful. Have a drink or two, and, and we'll have a good time. Ever after. And fish and chips. And fish and, and chips. Fish and chips. Of course, fish yeah. and chips. Can't miss that. Guys, thank you so much for coming on Pleasure. the Mess Podcast. We great. appreciate it. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll, we'll see you guys in London in a little bit, hopefully. Let's go, Mets. Let's go, Mets. Let's go, Mets. Let's go, Mets. Let's go Mets. Let's go Mets.